Fox News had a fascinating conversation recently. Uh, they had all your favorite people, okay? We're dealing with uh, the Janine Piros, the Geraldos. There we go. So Janine Pirro had a bit of a meltdown after Geraldo Rivera decided to question just how effective Trump's leadership was, especially in regard to Vladimir Putin. What I love about this is how triggered she gets over something that, I mean, is posed as a question, but should really just be a statement. Let's watch. Biden is responsible for the decline of the West. What we are seeing right now is a, I can't say the word, is a wuss. Mm, is a wuss. All right, very nice, very nice. Okay, well, uh, why is Biden a wuss? Is it because he's not escalating the war by implementing a no fly zone? Is that why he's considered a wuss or is there something more to it? Uh, well, she then goes on to say, that Trump wasn't a wuss, that Trump was really this strong man leader that we needed to hold the world's authoritarians and dictators accountable. Let's watch. How do you know that Putin wasn't playing Trump? How do you know? When, oh, stop when you he see wasn't he was, playing Trump. When, when Trump. He didn't Trump invade was, was Trump. I, I, was I love Trump. I love it's Trump. It's not about loving I, Trump. It, it's about the fact that Trump had everybody against the wall. How do you know and that don't Putin think it was didn't think different. Trump would give him I don't Ukraine give anyway. a damn what Putin thinks. I only care what Putin did. And he was a a wuss when Trump was president, and that's the end of it. Okay, so uh, Janine Pirro, very triggered by what Geraldo Rivera said there, um, and I love Geraldo Rivera. Say like, I love Trump. I love Trump. I just I love Trump. I love Trump. Okay, just relax, buddy. It's gonna be okay. No, but her statement: Trump had everyone up against the wall. What are you talking about? He bragged about falling in love with Kim Jong Un. He bragged about sending letters to him, exchanging letters like they're pen pals. He cleared the way for Turkish troops to go into Syria and slaughter the Kurds who were assisting us in rooting out ISIS. And by the way, I mean he can't he can't help himself. He keeps saying positive things about Putin even after this invasion. Here's a headline from Newsweek, recent headline. Trump says, a lot of love behind Putin wanting to make his country larger. That's an actual headline from Newsweek. And I thought, look, maybe that's hyperbole. He didn't say that. There's no way he said that. I mean, at this point, as we're watching all this footage of hospitals being bombed, as we, you know, watch all of these. Ukrainian refugees like flee the country, more than 2 million at this point. As we see the destruction of one city after the next, there's no way he said that. But I, he did He did say that. And guess who he said it to? He said it to Janine Pirro over the weekend. Trump discussed the conflict during an appearance on Fox News host Janine Pirro's radio show on Sunday. On Sunday, meaning just a few days ago, not, not too long ago. But Janine Pirro listened to that. And thought, no, he he's not a wuss. He would definitely, definitely have Putin's back up against the wall. Okay, and let me give you his exact quote. You say, what's the purpose of this? This is Trump, you know, questioning why would Putin do this? They had a country. You could see it was a country where there was a lot of love, and we're doing it because you know. Somebody wants to make his country larger or he wants to put it back the way it was. Interesting choice of words there. Can we put that graphic back up? Because he decided to include himself in the equation, okay? It was a country where there was a lot of love and we're doing it because, we're doing it because. I don't know, just be a little more careful if you want to seem like you're not siding with Putin. It seems like you're in on it. I mean, the wording is amazing. The quote by itself, even if he didn't use the word where, uh, is bad enough. But yeah, he decided to put himself in that equation, which is fascinating. And listen, I gave you examples of how he kowtows to all sorts of authoritarians across the globe. I mean, he loved Rodrigo Duterte from the Philippines, Narendra Modi in India. The list goes on and on. But look, let's focus specifically on his relationship with Vladimir Putin. He was transparent about how he loved being Putin's bitch. I'm not even kidding, just watch. 
Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. You got a lot of killers. Why you think our country's so innocent? Just before Trump's inauguration, the president said he was open to lifting Russian sanctions. He goes a step further, proposing a cyber unit with Russia, the country that had just attacked the US. And I quote, an impenetrable cybersecurity unit so that election hacking and many other negative things will be guarded. I was in Russia, I was in Moscow recently, and I spoke indirectly and directly with President Putin, who could not have been nicer. After Putin kicked out U.S. diplomats to retaliate against sanctions, the president thanked him. I want to thank him because we're trying to cut down on payroll. I'm very thankful that he let go of a large number of people. We'll save a lot of money. Putin of Russia, 100 percent. Joe has lost it. In his best day, he wasn't a smart man. Everybody knows that. Would you now, with the whole world watching, tell President Putin would you denounce what happened in 2016? And would you warn him to never do it again? My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others, they said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin, uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. Listen, I don't know why Putin didn't invade Ukraine when Trump was in charge. I'm pretty happy that he didn't make that decision when Trump had the power to enable him, embolden him and provide cover for him. But remember when Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi crown prince ordered the slaughter, the dismemberment of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. When that assassination was carried out, what was Donald Trump's first reaction or response to it? It was to provide cover, to make excuses, to deny that MBS was behind that assassination plot. Donald Trump is the definition of a weak, pathetic wuss. And for Janine Pirro or anyone, I don't care what their political affiliation is, for anyone to argue that that man who complained about alleged bone spurs to avoid the Vietnam draft, to argue that that guy is a strong guy, not buying it. You can make fun of Joe Biden for being sleepy. You can criticize him, I criticize him on the show all the time. But it's real sad when you look at that pathetic guy, Donald Trump and think, wow, that's a strong leader. The guy who ran away, hid in a bunker because he was afraid of BLM protesters. That's your hero, sad.